my context is um, Dallas, Fort Worth area, uh, highly churched, um, large churches. Uh, you can see some of the churches in Dallas from here. <laughs> it, I mean, $150 million, $200 million, in one church in town just started $250 million. Tell the people on the video where we are. We're in Minnesota, so <laughs> big church. You, you really can. Yeah, you look south. Um, so so my, the context that I find my life playing out in is, is one in which the bulk of people, not all people, but the bulk of people have some understanding of who Jesus is. So um, I use the phrase inoculated. Mm -hmm. um, it's been my experience that the bulk of people have enough of Jesus to feel like they don't need him or that they understand him enough so they turn you off easy. So what, what I want, here's how I contextualize, just to be honest with you. I will constantly contrast the difference between the gospel and religion. Constantly. If you listen to me on podcast, if you listen, I constantly want to go, this is the gospel, this is not the gospel. This is not the teaching of Christ. This is morality, this is religion, this methodology is religious. This methodology is gospel driven, this. And so how I contextualize the gospel in my setting is to constantly contrast it with, I, I don't want to call it evangelicalism, but that, that tends to be what I call it. Um, I, I want to, in, in my setting, say, this is probably what you grew up with. This is why it's not true because of what Jesus just said here. And so that's how I'm contextualizing the gospel. Whereas, like, I look at other dear friends of mine, like Driscoll and I have an ongoing argument of who has the harder job. Him trying to proclaim the gospel in a completely secular society or me trying to proclaim the gospel in a society where everyone feels like they already know the gospel despite the fact that they don't know the gospel. Uh, and I've had some most gut-wrenching experiences of... Um, in, in another church, being a part of their baptism service, just saying, hey, would you help us baptize? We're baptizing a lot. And being in the water with a girl that says, I want to be baptized, my mom's sick. And me having to go, well, okay, this is about to get really awkward because I'm, I'm out of the water. I'm not baptizing you. All right, so I, yeah, I'm getting baptized. I love, I love Jesus, my mom's sick. I, I need to be baptized because my mom's sick. Okay, okay, this is a problem. I mean, this is a problem. So th that's what contextualization looks like for me. I need to contrast religion with the gospel. It, and, it, and at times I need to contrast secular thought with the gospel. But, but the bulk of the people out in the crowd for us are de-churched, which means they grew up in church and they started seeing some of the weird hypocrisy in it or how it didn't add up or how it didn't make sense or how it didn't, and they walked away. And now for whatever reason, they're, they're coming back or friends are drawing them in. But even those friends have church experience. It, even people who've never professed Christ have, have, have some church experience. Um, and so we, we get our, I tell you when I, I smile, I smile when just the absolute, last time we baptized, we, we had a guy that got in the water and was just grew up an atheist his whole life. And I was like, thank you, Jesus, for that. That was just a little gift for me. <laughs> it, I, I felt like that had my name on it from Matt Chandler, from, from Christ, you know, here, there, sleep well. And, um, and a witch. And I mean, I was, I was beaming. I, I mean, I had music up on the way home, like pagans, yes, all right? <laughs> Versus just get in the water. Hey, I grew up in church my whole life, you know? I thought this is what it was. This isn't what it is. This is what I come professing Christ as my Lord and Savior for the first time, despite the fact that I had every one of Michael W. Smith's albums. Mm. <laughs> so that, that's, that's how I contextualize it. Mm. Okay.